Welcome to Lair of the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. On today's episode, Metal Memories, we're going to take a stroll down memory lane where I'm going to reminisce about my early memories with particular bands and uh, how I discovered that band and just memories that I have around that band. And the first band that I picked is Kiss. All right, if you're in my age group, if you were, uh, let's say, six, seven, eight years old up to a late teenager, early 20s, from 75 to 78, 74 to 78, 79, you were into KISS. You were affected by KISS. KISS was the biggest band in the world. KISS was everywhere. Everybody was talking about KISS. This was before the internet. So there was a real mystique around the band. Now, I was really young at that time. I was only seven, eight years old. But I was aware of KISS because for, for a couple reasons. I had an uncle that was only 10 years older than me. So he was a teenager during this time. And he had a whole bunch of KISS records. Uh, my memory, mostly the, the later stuff, like he had Destroyer and Kiss Alive 1 and rock and roll over, Alive 2, Love Gun. Uh, and so I remember when we, I would visit, I would listen to these records, I would hear him playing them. And the one that really sticks out in my mind is Alive 2. Uh, you know, that's the one that with the pictures, you know, seeing Gene and the uh, inside of the record and everything, you know, it just seemed larger than life and really as a kid this was the only thing I saw from them was what was what was on the album covers I never saw them in any magazines I wasn't quite old enough for that yet so I was exposed to them that way but then also where I lived my next door neighbor uh, had a teenage son and he seemed so much older than me at the time. He was probably only like 16 or 17, but he, he seemed much older. And his room was in the basement of their house. So there was a window to his room that was on the ground level outside of, uh, of his room there. So he would also play drums. So he would turn on, you know, my memory is, is uh, hearing a live, a live one and a live two, he would turn those on, crank it up, sit down behind his drums, and play along with it. And all the kids in the neighborhood, I mean, there'd be 20, 30 kids would sit outside this window, because again, his window was on the, the ground level, so you could look in, and his drum set was right up against that wall, so you were sort of looking out over him on his on his drum set. And everybody would take turns looking in and he'd be in there bashing along to Kiss Records. So uh, that was, you know, extremely cool. All the kids in the neighborhoods coming on their bikes and their big wheels, you know, they'd hear this in the distance and it was like, oh man, this, this kid, you know, he's playing his drums. So one day uh, my, my parents, my mom was inside their house talking to his mother about whatever and I'm there with them. And I just had to sneak off, you know, all these times sitting outside that window. You'd look in the window and you could see him at the drums, but his room was always dark. You couldn't really see anything. So I was like, I had to slip away and see if I could get a look at this kid's bedroom. So I snuck away and here he had the ultimate 70s teenager bedroom. And me as an eight-year-old, my mind was blown. He didn't have a door. He had beads hanging down, right? I was like, whoa, he doesn't have a door. And then I came in and what really blew my mind was is he didn't have a bed. He just had a mattress on the floor in the corner. <laughs> and I thought, oh man, this is so cool. You know, he doesn't even have a bed. He's so cool. And he had a fishnet draped across the top of his ceiling. And there was all this random stuff in the fishnet, like, pencils and pieces of paper and soda cans and stuff like that and his walls all over his walls were oh and and he had a black light and a lava lamp all over his walls were kiss posters 
And I remember the one wall had giant posters of each one of the guys. Like I got up there, it's the solo album covers. Each one of the guys against against his wall. And then the other ones were just like live pictures, but just the entire room, you know, and with the, the black light and the lava lamp. And he had one of those, uh, uh, you know, fire engine like light things. And it was just like, <laughs> I walked into this room and I was like, whoa, this is like, so cool. This is the coolest thing in the world. So that's my early memories of being exposed to Kiss. And then the first piece of music that I ever bought with my own money was a, a single, 45 single of uh, Dr. Love. And I remember at the time I had heard about, oh yeah, you know, Gene Simmons spits blood and everything. And I thought, you know, if there's a part in the song when he goes, where he goes, uh, Ha! He makes this noise. And I thought, you know, that's probably when he spits the blood. Because you know? <laughs> I just didn't know, you know. And I remember telling kids on the bus, like, oh, yeah, you know, I got this, this single, you know, uh, Dr. Love. And, you know, it sounds like that part of the song, you know, that's probably where he spits blood. You know, I remember the kids on the bus would always talk about Kiss. And then, you know, it was a little bit later and there was a rumor that uh, Peter Chris had, had left was going to leave the band or had left the band or something. I don't know. You know, we were just kids. How would we know these things? And and we're all, all these kids are forming like, why would he leave Kiss? You know, and this one kid, uh, you know, he had the answer, you know, and he said, you know, Peter's leaving Chris, uh, leaving Kiss because uh, Gene Simmons gets to blow fire and spit blood and he doesn't get to do any of that. So he's, he was mad. So he left Kiss, you know, <laughs> as an eight year old, nine year old, it's like, oh, Oh, you know, maybe that maybe that makes sense. But uh, so then, you know, of course, once I got old enough, once I was 10, 11 years old and I was able to start buying more records, you know, I remember taping uh, records off of off of my uncle and I would take one of those flat tape recorders and just put it in front of one of the speakers on his stereo. So I was getting one side of it. You know, I had a live two that way. I had Destroyer that way, you know, and eventually I, I started getting them all and uh you know, I wouldn't say I'm the biggest Kiss fan in the world, but uh, that period from Alive 1 to Alive 2, uh, I love. And it just brings back a lot of, uh, you know, great memories of discovering uh, hard rock and uh, just setting me off on my journey uh, into music. So, all right. So uh, that's it for today. Uh, let me know in the comments section. Like, I, I know that there's a lot of people out there my age that, you know, have memories have memories of Kiss. You know, it was such a big part of our youth. Uh, you know, I remember seeing, I didn't mention this, I remember seeing Kiss Meets the Phantom, waiting for that to come on TV. You know, we had a black and white TV and it was like the first time I'd actually seen them, you know, actually moving around. That was just mind blowing. But all right, so you get the idea though. There's a lot of memories uh, with this band and I'm sure there's a lot of other people out there that have, uh, you know, memories of the first time they heard Kiss or how they, how they discovered Kiss. So, uh, let me know in the comments section. Let me know what your memories are. And, uh, all right. So thanks. Uh, make sure you hit like and subscribe and, uh, until we meet again, stay heavy, stay metal.